Welcome to episode 12. 12. Thank you, Andrew. 12 of Trusty Hogs. Big news in the Hog studio. Hi, I'm Helen Bauer. No. <laughs> it's me, Helen Bauer. I'm going to put my chit on your head. It's not Helen I'm Bauer. I'm puzzling. It's not Helen Bauer. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> oh, my God. I hate that friend. Sorry. Um, it's okay. That was like, I gave me PTSD. Um, so <laughs> the big news of the Hog studio is poor Helen Bauer has COVID. Tested positive on the PCR. But I'm here anyway. No, it's not her. <laughs> <laughs> she got she got it from her housemate Sunil, who we will here henceforth be feuding with, as Helen was. Uh, but in Helen's stead, the person doing frankly a poor imitation. <laughs> let's that hope was that, quite bad. Let's hope that doesn't hold, that hold ring true for the entire episode. <laughs> oh. Is the one and only Chloe Pets. Chloe Pets, welcome. Hello, thanks for having Hi. me. Um, Helen FaceTimed me this morning and said. Like really sweetly, like oh, thank you so much for covering me on Trusty Hogs. Like <laughs> I, I, I honestly mean so much. Like it's so great. And then she said, if you say anything about me, I will fucking destroy you. <laughs> and then I was like, what if I say like things verbatim that you have said? Like that can't be considered to be bullying. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, but it will be because we all know that I'm a person that you very much need context for. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Helen Barris summed up in a sentence: you very much need context. But like I didn't. <laughs> that much like insight into her own selfhood like she was very good at sort of analyzing herself and yeah she is weirdly like self-aware she just c- continues to do the things and yet she that persists. she says <laughs> that she's self-aware about anyway she persisted <laughs> reader she persisted <laughs> again a very another ha- helen bauer right. sentence through the fog step forth the trusty hogs yeah you're gonna give them your problems and they will solve Maybe they won't, and that's your problem. They'll have guests and Andrew White on the tech. Oh, it's Helen and Catherine as the trusty hogs. Trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Trusty hogs, thank you so much for being here. Um, episode 12 is it's an interesting one. We had a guest, really. You know, we've already interviewed her. Yeah. Oh, I would say poor Rialina, who is a comedian and very funny woman in her own right, came in here, told us, well, I told everyone she was a virologist and Chloe Petz and I asked nonstop questions about COVID. Yeah, it's one of those things where like, you know, every two years. I'm so, so sorry, Chloe, you were just interrupted there by Andrew trying to open his food. Oh, and now he can't even speak because his mouth's full. Andrew, uh, just wait for your lunch till after the podcast. He might be hungry. It's quite late in the afternoon I've just now. seen him pound a pizza swirl. <laughs> He's not that, that hungry. That was my snack. Stop saying snack with a full mouth, Andrew. You also like, can't have a snack that close to lunch and call it a snack. You're just having a large lunch. Yeah. It's a start. Sorry, a starter then. A, a starter. starter. Well, yeah. Andrew, a wait s- for the mains till after the podcast. Swirl. <laughs> What's going on? Sorry. Wow. Professionalism is a dead... Trade apparently. Honestly, Andrew. Didn't, you... didn't mind when I brought you that sparkling water there, did you? No. To share. But equally, I haven't been doing this when Chloe's been speaking. Even if I did, that wasn't very loud. <laughs> you decided to have the loudest lunch in the world, Andrew. So right. behave yourself. Well, can, I, can I open this while we're having an amnesty then? Yeah, oh, go we're on. not having an amnesty. Thank you. I, I, I forbid it. I right. forbid it. Come on, chicken now. pasta Thank amnesty. You. Thank you very much. Is it open? Thank you. You're welcome. Can you chew quietly? Yeah, I'll turn my mic off now. Honestly. It's a very soft food. I think you'll be fine. Yeah, but the packaging was loud, wasn't it? Very rustly, actually. Very. Obnoxious, if anything. <laughs> Exhibiting your male privilege over there, are we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so episode 12, we asked her loads of questions about COVID, so we just want to give a warning to say that. Oh, there's a fuck ton of COVID. But I feel like it must be like so difficult. For, well, not even difficult for Rialina. I feel like, you know, as a football fan, once every two years when a major football tournament comes around <laughs> and everyone's into it, people will be like, I'll come on to a comedy podcast and everyone will like uh, ask me so many football questions. Yeah. When the pandemic came, as a, re- a comedian virologist, she must have been like, my time has come. Yeah, fair enough. But I just wanted to flag that also, but also I think it was really useful and really helpful. I've been anxious and you've been anxious and we got a load of questions out and it was helpful. Look, at the end of the day we feel better but it doesn't necessarily mean the listener will we can only hope and also we're a podcast we're not your mom so what do you want from us but if you're like stressed out by the current situation about things and you don't want to hear it then just listen to this bit where i continue to pretend to be helen bauer and then maybe yeah but also listen to the real in a bit when you're feeling like but if you're stressed out and information makes you feel less stressed like me then listen up 
And also, we're we are so funny in it. I cannot explain to you <laughs> how hilarious we are. Multiple uh, we, applause breaks. Yeah, you, you so, dead chat. <laughs> multiple applause breaks. Yeah. Um, we also um. I think we probably have, yeah, changed the future of British podcasting, if yeah, anything. Yeah. You know something, Clive, it's really nice to be doing a, an actual podcast with you because the last time we podcasted together, I don't know if you remember it. Do you remember it? Yeah, I remember. Okay. Well, did, what did I do wrong? It feels like your tone is that I did something wrong. Oh, no, no. I didn't mean as a guest on, on Trusty Hogs. Before that, do you know when we last podcasted together? No. Yes, I know. <laughs> what? No, I don't. Hang on. Twas the year... 2017, what did I, I believe, we went to a gig in Canal Street in Manchester. I was on the bill, as was Chloe Pence. I spoke about being... Oh, my God! <laughs> I spoke about being bisexual. A police officer in the front row said, make up your mind. I said, if nothing, if anything's not made up its mind in this room, it's your haircut. She had a mullet, but not my finest moment. Honestly, such a good... She got up out of her chair and went to come for me. Chloe Petz went to come for her, which was very exciting, to, like, like knight in shining armour. As it was, her police officer friends were like, sit down. She sat down and then she left to the break. That was but the beginning of our troubles. What does it say about the amount of conflict that I've been that I don't even remember this? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, it was very exciting because I saw her coming for me and I knew she was a police officer because I'd already ascertained yeah. that. And she hated me because I wasn't impressed. And then, if <laughs> anything, I was quite mean about it. And then be, I saw her come for me, but behind her, I saw you come for her. And I was like, I'm fine. My big friend's coming to get you. <laughs> oh, I, that's so funny. I really can't remember that. Well, did I, mean, I shout? Did I come to us like, hey, cat bitch, like that? Uh, no, actually, it was much more like, oi, oi. Um, so, you oh, know, okay. it was fine. But very, you, very high pitched. You, uh, you <laughs> and Hazel were coming, so it was fine uh, okay, to, help, yeah. to save me. So you were both just like, oi, oi. And I was like, I'm going to be okay. Anyway, the police officer's friend got her to sit down. Yeah. And that was but the beginning of our troubles. Because... Oh, yeah. And by the way, yes, I am going to get to how we podcasted. So wait for it. So 2017, <laughs> it's December, November. I, what the, I had to be back for something the next morning and I can't remember what yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we decided to drive back from Manchester. It was fine. We were doing a car share because my housemate Adele drove us back to London. Do you remember this? Yes, I do remember that. And we head off. We think, okay, we left Manchester at 10.30, but that's fine. It was going to be a brutally late night, but we were going to get in at, what, 2.30, I think yeah. we thought? And look I, look, I will say I'm very charismatic on a car journey. I really come into my own. You emceed the hell out of that car journey. And I, like your doting wife, provided snacks. Yeah, um, really nice snacks. Not like pizza swirls followed by chicken pasta salads, Andrew, but actual <laughs> snacks for the group. Um, so I accommodated, you hosted, we were fine. Mm -hmm. That was the night that you mispronounced futon. Oh my God, we were in the car a couple of hours in and Chloe Petz just randomly starts talking about a futon. I didn't understand that she was wrong. It's not my fault because I honestly think what you're saying is so classist because I never, I didn't even know what- Are you trying to make out that futons are a posh people thing? Yeah. Because posh people don't need futons, Chloe. They have spare rooms. <laughs> no, but I didn't- Don't even try to make this a class <laughs> war. Don't you dare. I'd only ever seen the word written down. I didn't know what it was until maybe like one year previous to that in 2016. That's because your life's fine. If your life was actually hard, you'd know what a futon <laughs> was. Yeah, no. So then I read it and was like, futon. That, to me, that sounds like- the right way to say it. Kung Fu. No, and we did all of this in that, in <laughs> we that did, car. We did. we did so much of this. And do you know what? It would have been absolutely fine and I would have sucked it up and thought it was the funniest thing in the world, but then what happened? And it would have been funny. Except while we mocked Chloe. It would have been funy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you remember this better than preparing to punch a police woman. <laughs> No, I can't tell you how many versions of it we did. Like, it went on for a long time. Anyway. It was really painful. Yeah. So we get past the futon business. But as this happens, we're on the motorway and it begins to snow heavily. Like, big time snow. Like, the worst snow I've ever seen in the UK while I've lived here. Look, and I don't mean to undermine the experiences of women. And I... <laughs> uh, and I hear you and I wish to validate your experience, but really? Did it snow? 
Why do you think we were stuck in the traffic? Because it was a multi car pile up in front of us. No, Chloe. It was because of the snow Are and the multi car pile. Yes. Oh, because so there was a multi car pile up because they slid on the snow. And snow. Oh, I forgot about that. Bit. It was massively snowing. It was snowing. I know this because the next night I had a gig at Angel. Oh, and there yes. Were like I remember the snow there. now, yeah. Oh, now I know why it was cold when I pissed I don't even on know. the side I, of the motorway. I think you just made me like have a memory that I don't even possess. I don't even know if there was a multi car pile up. There I- was a multi car pile up. Because okay. we, were, we were quite near the front. And this I, is why women are terrible at supporting women. I think both were true. Both can be true. But it was snowing heavily. Yeah. I know this because Adele kept the car battery on even though we were stood still for yes. so long because yeah. it was freezing. Yeah. Also Adele, who I adore and who drove the whole time, had a small car. So we were all cramped and, and warm and cold. And anyway, the point, the worst part about it was we kept having updates on the traffic being like, oh, it'll move here, it'll move here, it'll move here. We got back to London, having left Manchester at 10.30 at 9 a.m. the next morning. We were in a car, 10 and a half hours. You can understand that the futon bit wore. (laughs) It wore. It wore. Also, bear in mind, I can't pee in public. I have OCD. I find it very difficult. Chloe and the other people in the car could manage somehow to pee in front of the drivers on the motorway, something I couldn't Look, do. Look, give the boys a show. You no, know? listen, and you, and you did. In fact, I think you said, all right, boys, here's the show. And um, and so I was like... Front or back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but by the time we got back, I hadn't peed in so oh, I, long. I, again, like, maybe I did know that that was sort of a meta-narrative at the time, but I didn't notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hadn't peed. It was a lot. Chloe was like really way like the the futon stuff had gotten too much for Chloe. Poor Adele was driving the, the whole time. But it, right, even though I punched a police officer that evening, you didn't. No, I did. No, the you real didn't. <laughs> the real hero of that story is Adele Cliff. Oh my because god, one hundred percent. She didn't fall asleep for one minute, but no. she drove us so safely and so beautifully. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was unbelievable. And there was like there was like two and a half pe- hour period, two and a half hours, where we didn't move. Yeah. On the motorway. We just and, stood. And still. then what happened in that two and a half hour period? At some point in that evening, we were like, this is amazing banter. <laughs> the banter uh, was so fresh. The banter here is amazing. We were so tired, so tired, and so hopeless, and so tired. That we were like, this is the best banter anyone's ever had. Yeah. Let's record this. As a podcast. So, so it takes 10 hours in a confined space going mental to get into the same mindset as every male open mic ever. Yeah. <laughs> Say I, a woman with her second podcast in two years. <laughs> anyway, um, we so we're like, we should record this. This is some futon, fury, furious. Let's do this. Fugue. Fugue. Let's do this. And then... Uh, Few, was, isn't that how you pronounce it? Yes, Andrew. Fug. Uh, it was really bad. Oh, honestly, it was one of the worst things I've ever heard. And I think Adele still has it on her phone. And it's like, it's going to get released at some point. In we our, went mad. We went, we went mad. I was so full of urine. We went mad, which would which would have been fine if it had been funny. But integrally, I think it was like painfully cringeworthy. Oh, it was incredibly tired people. Yeah. Desperate to get home. One of whom was full of piss. Absolutely full. And we were all just broken. We were just broken. It was bad. It yeah. was really, really bad. We rationed the we rationed the snacks. Mm-hmm. But I obviously like ate all of mine within two minutes. I'm hungry. <laughs> Are we there yet? Can I have the rest of your snacks? I never hated people as much as when you all got back in the car having peed. I was like, I actually can't. I hate them so much like I was in physical pain it was so bad and I remember uh, the thing it's funny that you should say it was wasn't funny because we never listened back uh, at least I didn't because it was like one of those things where as soon as I had some sleep I woke up my first thought was oh that'll be bad delete the tapes delete the tapes that'll be terrible (laughs) and so that's the last time we podcasted together well, it's really nice that we're um, beautiful, having the same exactly the same experience <laughs> now. <laughs> All of this absolutely fucking unlistenable. <laughs> yes, thank you for sticking with us. Stay tuned for real, Lena.
thank you so much to our executive producers. I can't believe we now have three. Honestly, we're so grateful to you. Thank you to Janina Bautista, Guy Goodman and Simon Moores. Janina's new. Thank you, Janina. How mm. exciting to have a patron of the arts who's a lady. It makes yeah, me feel so very excited. Um, I made that weird, but honestly, you're what Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and also to our producers, Carrick Duke, Sarah and Molly, the duvet ladies. <laughs> Aideen McQueen. Hey, Aideen's a comic. Thank you, Aideen. Yeah. Caitlin Lith, Joe Holmes, Zoe, Kim Dovgal or Dougal, depending on how she wants it said, but has anybody told me? No. Sorry. Lee Myerskoff, David Walker, Tim and Dom, Kira Leach, Richard Bicknell, SB Dubs, L, Richard Bald, Sadie Cashmore, Neil Redmond, Claire Owen Jones, Rachel R, Victoria Hutchison, Jess and Nick, Emma Walton, Karen and David Bull. Anthony Conway, Harold Van Dyke. We're so grateful to all so, of you. So, grateful. And thank you to everyone who's not a listed producer, but who donates on Patreon and has committed to Patreon for the three pounds. Mm. Um, we're so grateful. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Fake your, fake your no knowledge again. What did you just say, really, now? I said I want this to be the episode of the three Vs. The three Vs. That the would be Vs. amazing. I don't that, that's your challenge. It's reference. Given that I've listened to every single episode. And oh. and we're a guest of one, were you not? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Ria. I love this. You... But what happened? Anthony every white goes to such effort. Yeah. Such effort. To name each one, and each one has its own name. So like... So, yeah, I know that so, it has its own name, but... And each like a... name is like They all three... start with the same yeah. letter. So oh, it's like... Oh, okay. It's just that. Styes and... What was it? Just that. I only remember wow. Sophie wow. Duker with Styes. Styes. Yeah, sex parties. Sex and... parties. Yeah, but Styes is the one that stuck with me. It's just (laughs) Styes. It would have been good if you'd gone through the alphabet in order. I would have respected that more. That. Wow. Look, I, wow. Oh, look who's showing off she knows her alphabet. Wow. Someone knows her alphabet. Yeah. Replacement. I'm here to be antagonistic. Yeah, it should apparently. have been the Greek alphabet as well. Yeah, really? I mean, to honestly. just keep it topical? Well, I think it would be so cool if we did get the three Vs. Virology will obviously discuss. Let's see what else comes up, really. You know? Okay. Oh, up. no. Oh, I thought you'd pick. Have you not picked the three Vs? No, no I, I, don't, I don't pre-pick. It. I oh, you don't pre-pick. Okay. And I write down things. I was going to say, that would be funny if, if the man told us which. That was an agenda. Both a vagina. No, it's real. Reactive. It's not prescriptive. <laughs> Hello, thank you for being here. Pleasure. Are we allowed to have this in range? You most certainly are. Yeah. Thank nobody for sponsoring this. or gives a shit. Thank um, you so much for this. You're welcome for the coffee. I was just asking you both if you'd had your. Oh, what is it? This is... Oh, actually, oh. you sent us for your order, and Chloe Pets and I were like, "That's not a real." I was thing. fucking fuming. Yeah, Chloe said no. No, uh, I didn't. Well, no, I did initially say no, and then I said, "We're going to turn up. We're going to ask the barista for this drink, and they're going to be like." It doesn't exist. That's not a dream. And then I'm You've and then I'm that. gonna just have the last laugh and laugh on the podcast, going, oh, I can't believe you Pranked, ordered that. Something like yeah. that. No, it is. Like, and she smelled it. And and what did you say? Smells hella Christmas. Oh, mm. does it? Have you smelled Big it? Big Christmas vibe. No, but no. should we be sticking our noses in your coffee? Well, don't don't breathe out. Last Only night? breathe in. Okay. Wait. Well, I've had my booster. I want to breathe into your nose. Breathe in. <laughs> breathe in. Oh my god, it smells like a mince pie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, baby. Mm-hmm. It's an almond chai well, I, okay, tea latte. So it's a latte. chai tea latte, which you can have with any milk, but I have it with almond because we're in a very small room and I didn't want this to get uncomfortable. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're well, there yeah. already. Fascinating. I thought Chloe Petz would take us there, but I thought it would. we'd wait a minute. Bowers, um, Bowers not here, so someone needs to fart. <laughs> no, nobody needs to fart. It's a small room. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> double, oh, my God. Here we go. Sorry. Can we just not? Um, but here's the thing. I asked you beforehand, had you had your booster? You've had your booster. I've had my booster. Chloe and I have not had our booster. Yeah. And Chloe asked a question, which I was going to ask, which is, does it matter which one? Because I got Pfizer. I got Moderna, baby. Okay. Really? So- How in the world did you get Moderna? Do you live in, like, where do you is live? That like, okay, it, yeah. Moderna's is that rare. Well, okay, Pfizer and Moderna are up there together. There's obviously a lot more research about Pfizer because way more people have it. But Moderna is like the Dolly Parton one. So, you know, if you oh, want to call her, put Dolly in your veins. Yeah, put Dolly in in me nine to five. Yeah. Um, now, they said um, that the, I had uh, like quite a charismatic person who stabbed me. And she was like, <laughs> M- Moderna, it's, it's great. It's the more modern one. It's like Pfizer, but Okay, just because it's in the name doesn't yeah. mean. She was shitting me as well. Well, I, no, but they're very similarly made. Pfizer and Moderna have the very similar technology. But my one's a bit better. Well, uh, like I said, because because not as many plan. people have had it, we don't have we don't have the, we don't have data. Okay. To okay. say, but it's but not on the booster. 
we don't have to get the same one that we got before? Well, actually, that's interesting because they've shown that if you had AstraZeneca before and then you get a Pfizer booster, we're seeing a lot of good stuff happening in the body from that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, but wow. it's not a bad thing. I had Pfizer and then and then I had Pfizer again. So I've had three Pfizers. And part of me is like, oh, I want like, you know, I like. I like. But that's kind of a I, nice. You know, I don't dress one tone. I like lots of colors. I like yeah. different things. So it feels I like, like nice revenge, though, for the people who got. Um, AstraZeneca when like that was seen like the bad yeah, choice. It's, a, it's, it's like, like a cool nice happy cool. ending. It's sort of like a nice coda yeah. to be able to go. Guess what? Once we give you Pfizer, ba boom, you're in you're in good shape. Why is it so good to have like a cocktail of vaccines within your blood? Because they have they. It's challenging the immune system in slightly different ways. Oh yeah, really good. We did not introduce Rhea properly. Really nice and incredible comic, but also. A virologist. Hack scientist. No, a virologist. An actual PhD she's holding. Been, she's been down a Wikipedia hole. No, a PhD <laughs> holding virologist um, who, in fact, knows what the hell she's talking about. I know. Uh, she's not wrong. I got my degree online um, <laughs> just at the what? beginning of the pandemic. Um, you the can just fuck? sign up for them. Degreesonline.com. You can oh, sign so- up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got you, 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 uh, you, oh god, we're all doomed. Um, but no, you, I, no, I did get it a while ago. You explain different the, viruses, though. I should be clear. I studied herpes virus. You did. I and did. Interchangeable, isn't it? Mm, no. Well, would no. you no, would you like virus, to interchange you know. those? I don't know. <laughs> well, actually, that's a good choice. A good question. Would you rather have herpes or coronavirus? Corona, because you yeah, get, you get over it. Well, well, long COVID. Some people suffer oh, from long COVID. Some people, it. some people die. Okay, I hear what you're um, saying. Uh, no, I didn't think it through. I but, thought about the best possible but you're version not, both. You're not wrong with the herpes in that. Herpes isn't just herpes. Herpes uh. is also things like chicken pox. So we all probably have already had a form of herpes. God. And that's the correct answer. Both. Where's the camera? <laughs> is, there, is, is the correct answer herpes? I like both. Well, I suppose the correct answer is 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 overall, can we be a little bit more hygienic and, and honest if you have STDs and don't just shag someone because you think, you know, okay. they don't need to know. I think that's the real answer, isn't it? I think at the beginning of every Trusty Hogs from here on in, you have to have a STD amnesty, and the guest has to say whether they have an STD. <laughs> 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 I am so looking forward to the after party, which is I, really why I'm I here. Think we're getting a lot better at that, though, you know? I think people generally do own when they have... Or maybe maybe just uh, do you know what I haven't been on the dating circuit in so long I have no idea. I feel like you're judging it by that. some nineties uh, standards there. Okay, that would have been illegal dating on my part, but let's oh. just say early early two thousands. Okay, I'm sorry for aging you more than I meant to. Do you know what it is? Every time Relina tells me what age she is, I it's so unfathomable to me that I make you older and older in my head because I'm like, yeah. can you believe really Relina's really, really actually a hundred years old? 83. Yeah. <laughs> she looks so good. I'm sorry. Um, also, you make it sound like it was a million years ago when you were dating. It wasn't Well, just ago. because you get married and then you don't date again, do you? you Depends. Do. And it was different. Depends. It was a different time. It's a safe space. You can date sometimes when you're married. If you're in an open room. If that's what you oh, want. I see. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh. I would check with your partner first. I oh, yeah. Do like, ask. That's say, what, you know ask. what? That's what drives me nuts about marriage is that up until you get married, this is this was my issue yeah. in my marriage. Up until you get married, it's your choice who you share your body with. The moment you get married, it's up to them who you share your body with. But it doesn't you like, about actually it. have to be. like. I find that so strange when like, what, p- people like after they get married like are like well that's just like one more penis or one more vagina for me for the rest of my life mm-hmm. and it's like it's I, I think it's like a really interesting headspace to be in to mm-hmm. to think that you're then like bound to that person for life because of this like sort of yeah, piece of paper it is it is a it, i think it is a crazy concept for the world we're living in now yeah and it but made sense earlier it made sense when you all lived in villages and didn't travel as much and you you know, you had shared experiences and you went home and, and the only television you watched was what was ever on at that time. Yeah. Whereas even now, in relationships, you each have your own phone, which has its own algorithm designed for you. And so and many so sexy you people watch. on it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and also, we live so long. <laughs> we live so long, but also the, just that algorithm separates you as people because you're not doing shared experiences anymore the same way that you would have... You know, our parents did. And so we're evolving away from each other. So I'm more and more in that sort of seven years, eight years. That's a good time to be with someone. Then you go, we're different now. Let's either renew that contract or move on. Yeah, that's nice. Or just Mm. like, just be like, should we just have like a, just like a small consensual affair? Yeah. Just to like get the inspiration back into our bodies and then come back to each other. You know? Yeah, or shall we have a third, or shall we both sleep around, or shall we go or to sex so, Yeah, and just get, I think that we're at a place now where people need to be... I Everybody think that, I think that monogamy think doesn't, doesn't are, work as well. But I don't think monogamy ever worked as well as it was, it was posited it did 
It's just that people did these things in secret. Mm. And now people are having mm. those conversations out loud. I don't like it's not like the 21st century didn't invent affairs or non-monogamy. People just well, broke the tr- breached the trust, right? And now people are actually talking about it. Or well, maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's the fact that with the 20th century came in this concept of marrying for love more than had ever mm-hmm. existed yeah, before. And that, point. because before when you had like your arranged marriages, kings and queens would be like, well, you will have my children, but then after that, you have your little thing, I'll have my little thing, yeah. and we won't talk about mm-hmm. it. You know, as long as my children mm-hmm. are my children. Because they weren't marrying for love, they were marrying for power and, and everything else. And I think in some ways, ex- mm. you know, it was it was different, wasn't it? And now we brought love in, and then it became, oh, you've betrayed me. You go, yeah. but the kids are yours. Yeah, but you've betrayed me. Love is supposed to be enough to keep us together forever. I love that answer. I'm just giving it a small Yeah, it's really interesting. Really very interesting. interesting. Sorry, I'm in a very weird... I think this is coming from my weird place. How's in my your room. marriage? Hey! <laughs> can I, can hey. I ask an excellent question first? Sure. <laughs> can, I, wait, be can, I, can I ask one? Why are you here? Can we just address that? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> um, didn't okay. Uh, should have said. In, I'm it, loving this. Okay. I'm enjoying this very much. But Helen has Corona. Does she? Yeah. And, I don't. and you don't. And well, you're winning. Qualifier. You're winning. That's why they're here. Oh, I thought you had a question, and the then well, I very oh, yeah. rudely so went, "You're not Helen." We've I apologize. got three strains of possibility that we could go down. One of them was uh, that we were talking about why I'm here. Helen's got coronavirus. Mm. Do was, we know if she has the Omicron? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Did she test positive on a lateral flow or a PCR? PCR. <gasps> she yeah. definitely got Rona. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, is she okay? She seems fine. She's doing a Nothing lot, can a that lot woman. of Instagram stories. She's making yeah. puzzles. She's sturdy as fuck. Yeah, she's a pretty sta- <laughs> Yeah, okay. she's a, she's a stable lady. Okay, she's gonna be fine. Okay, good. I'm her second in command because we're both six foot and disgusting. Um, that's why. Yeah, the, oh, those were I your requirements cool for yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Bringing the hogs part of Trusty Hogs. Yeah. Got it, okay. <laughs> and then the second line that we was going to go down was my excellent question. Yeah, what's your excellent question? Uh, and I actually f- have forgotten it. No! Oh, I'm sorry, that is, is totally no, no, my no. fault. Is there anything worse? Oh, it's no, my this fault. Was it, this was it. Yeah, oh. So we were talking about, um, like affairs and you know that sometimes your affairs because you're like bored within your relationship and you want to sort of like shake things shake things up you're not getting enough from your partner blah 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 but sometimes it's because it's like people are like indulging particularly men in like that transgression and like they're getting off on the secretiveness and off on the like interplay of power blah 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 that's why you know it's often with sort of a secretary so do you think there's a world in which we as things start to become more open people will start finding different ways to be transgressive because like if an affair isn't like taboo what will they do instead but i think that happens already even in open relationships and non-monogamous relationships often though so those require an awful lot of communication and setting boundaries and rules Mm. that are just different to those of like old school monogamy Mm. those rules are still breachable I think people just do that instead. Okay. Just break those rules. So if it's like, you can only see the same person three times, it's seeing them more than that. Or like never see an ex, that kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Interesting. Question, excellent question, answered excellently. <laughs> <laughs> I think also we see it in porn. I think that, y- you know, the more access that younger people have to to more extreme and extreme versions of porn, the more that we're seeing in teenagers, and this is why we're focusing on on teenage education a lot more in schools about re- relationships and, and how to be in a healthy relationship mm-hmm. is because they're having such access to hardcore porn mm-hmm. that when they get to the bedroom, they think that hardcore porn is sex. Yeah. And, yeah, and okay, so they're yeah. going, you know, and that's where we're seeing boundaries pushed. And when we look at people in power and we look at, you know, we, we sort of, we already conflate people in power with sexual perversion. And that's because when you get to a certain point, yeah. you push you have to get pushed, you know, further and further to get your rocks off and things like that. We okay. see that when you when you're when you're in power, when you're rich and you can have everything or pay for everything, then it takes these real extremes to push those boundaries, which mm. is why I'm here today to talk to you about <laughs> <laughs> of Justy Hogs has gone to our head. Um, okay, so to go back to boosters, which is actually what I wanted to ask about. Yeah, believe it or not, third strain of conversation that we can go down. She is, she's very good, isn't Thank she? She's keeping it all in order. Keeping notes. I have ne- I mean, are you supposed to be here to replace Helen? Look, Mara? Because it feels I mean, like if one, anything, it's like hanging out with a more one type male. Hell of like, an audition. Let's keep on track, shall I've, we? No, no, no. I think the, prob- the problem. If I don't is... see your tits by the end of this, she's not. Oh, I'm, you know I mean? I'm going to be balancing one on your head. That's okay. The, yeah. I'm that's I, the power I, I look forward yeah. to that. <laughs> Does she power, do that? Power. Oh yeah, she lifts it up and then pop. Helen just pops it on your head. She lets go like boom. So like I'm the scale. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, can I at least come back just for that experience? Absolutely. Like, I mean, I, w- I will, I will enjoy yours, you say, but like, I feel you like have to come here for that. Rea- you can just ask for a gig. She'll just do it at a gig. Okay, it's but actually very both, comforting. We're both women. We don't often gig together. Oh, that's I mean. a good point. <laughs> like we don't, you know, in theory we could, but in reality we don't. You make a good point. And you're both straight womenish as perceived by bookers. Straight womenish. Which what's the ish? Straightish bit? women. Straightish women. Yeah, straightish women. <laughs> straightish women. <laughs> There's an ish in there. I'm not sure. Are we yeah, not we've both, actually got you here to tell both? you that you are non-binary. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on the jumper. You've got Thank the call. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're taking a moment you. to yeah. just taking a moment to take no, this all on board. As in yeah. because I think bookers will book two women together if they're like one is queer. Oh, I, I'm gonna look out for that. Oh, I'm gonna look out for that now. I'm sorry, I keep wandering away from the mic, Andrew. Oh, that's right. Helen does it all the time. Ha- okay. Andrew is so fucking good at levels. Are you yeah. good at levels? Okay. He's the best in the biz. It's oh, actually yeah. this. This. I mean, we we present a challenge. We really do. The only reason I listen to it is because of the levels. <laughs> 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 I, I'm sat there like, oh, that could have been shrill, but <laughs> we've dodged a bullet there. Thank you, Andrew White. <laughs> He's very good. So I okay. I will see if I can shriek a couple times just so you can. <laughs> but really, I feel like because you're a virologist, have you been exhausted by a constant inundation? Uh, is that a word? Inundate? Have you been yeah. inundated with questions about this to a point that you're exhausted? No, I think that no, because in the situation that we're in, people need to have these conversations and they need to ask these questions. And so, if there's anything I can do to help, I will. I have to be very careful to make sure I'm up to date. I don't want to be responsible for spreading misinformation either. Uh, so uh, there are times where I've been asked to go on the radio or whatever, and I've said no if I don't have the time to look into it or I'm not confident on knowing enough about that subject. But generally, the whole reason that we're in the situation we're in where we've got sort of very polarized groups of people who are either very, very pro or very, very against, and then a whole, we've got a whole bunch of people in the middle who aren't sure, and our job is to kind of coax them into being sure by going, ask those questions. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay to be unsure, but let's ask those questions and let's answer those questions because I'd rather more people be sure than more people just go to that place of, no. But that's still generous of you with your time. For the second time. That's yeah, it's, an, it's a really, I it's a like generous that. kind like answer. That. Yeah, because you're a comic and I know. Chloe I mean, keeps applauding. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I like this guy. What's the, this guy's great. And it's like, yeah, because, yeah, no, because, because, I know it's what I <laughs> Yes, very good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, my, but my question is, um, why do you feel responsible to do that? It's, I'm gra- grateful that you do. Very glad that you do. Well, it's, it, it's, not, a, it's not a responsibility. It's just... If people are willing to admit that they're scared, then why shouldn't I take 10, 15 minutes to help them out with that? That's kind if of I can. Why wouldn't you? In the situation, what can I do? I, I, I can't and I don't volunteer at clinics. Um, you know, I have children. I, you know, we all are doing what we can. That's the yeah. small thing that I can. I just can. think that we are all quite quick to. We've learned, I think, from a 24-hour news media and like the constancy with which we can reply to each other on Twitter and things a sort of a knee jerk reaction of rage or frustration and to have someone be like I I just think that someone's admitting a vulnerability and I'll take the time with them is actually sadly quite remarkable and very good yeah well yeah, done. but the alternative is, hey, Rhea, can I ask you a question? No, fuck you. Get your own information off the internet, which is the problem in the first I place, isn't it? I love personality, though, for you. No, fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. I'm tweeting here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spreading misinformation here. <laughs> I love that for you. That'd be amazing. What um, am I, a doctor? Stop yeah, it. Right? Uh, yeah. Right, so what's going on then? Yeah, tell us what... what We're all going to get it, aren't we? Possibly. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, we just... I mean, again... It's spreading so quickly. Yeah. It's spreading so quickly. And it's going to come down to, it's going to be really interesting to see what we learn from this one in terms of who does get it, who doesn't get it. There are people who got Delta more than once. So we are seeing pe- some people are getting reinfected. Other people, I, I myself had Alpha last November, then uh, with the whole family. So we all were in with Alpha, the yeah. whole family. Alpha for I the know. whole family. <laughs> I know. We all got matching you illnesses know, yeah <laughs> matching illnesses took it for the christmas photo nice um and then and then we all got vaccinated well as much as we can so my whole family is as vaccinated as we can be because of course we're not vaccinating yeah. children fully which means that they can't travel which means that we're not going anywhere for christmas okay because everybody else vaccinates their children twice but we vaccinate them once anyway 
bitch over. But no, so that's fine. We got all that. And then <laughs> I got, oh my gosh, it is so twee. And then my husband and I went and got our boosters at the same time last week. And got those together. Oh, I know. Boosted. I know. I made. You know what? And it's crazy. I made my appointment online, and then I said, "Hey, this is when my appointment is. See if you can get it." And he was went online and went, "Mine's five minutes after yours." That's so I feel like I don't know much about virologists, but I feel like this. Maybe this is like sort of common amongst virologist circles that you just like do everything together virology wise. Like, oh, he's not a just... virologist though. Uh, oh. No, oh, okay. he's not a virologist. Okay. Yeah. He 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 left school at nineteen and never looked back. Uh, I love that Rio's like not only is he not a virologist, he's thick. He... <laughs> <laughs> Thick, 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 thick as shit, but he's dumb. He had abs. I don't know if you can appreciate abs, but he had abs. We've heard of them. We've heard of We've abs. Heard yeah, of yeah. He had like um, eight of them. I was like, okay, I'll be having some of that. So, um, okay, so we don't know yet. Basically, is the answer. I, and I have no. I, sorry, I just wanted to say. Oh, like, I, no, I was going to say. Do you mind us asking you lots of questions now? About do it. Let's do it. Ask your okay. Uh, Andrew, can we get like music in the edit under this? Yeah. Like, do, 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 okay, you know, like a little bit like. Andrew, can you give us three minutes on asking quick fire questions about... This isn't a quick fire question. It might take three minutes to ask. Well, Rhea's going to answer it as quickly as she can. Okay, sorry. I will do my best to be quick. I think it's one of those stupid questions where I might need like some time to sort of work through it to work out what it is that I'm actually asking. Sure. Andrew, are you ready, I'm my baby boy? I'm this question. I, I am ready. Okay. Uh, let's, let's do Catherine first, though. Okay. You formulate I'll your question. I'll probably forget mine again, but no, anyway. Think about, think about it. Do you think we should have a national lockdown again? Oh, okay. Uh... That is not an e that is not like a yes or no question at all. Okay. Do you think we will? Quick fire. All right. <laughs> it's quick yeah. fire. Quick fire. Yeah, let's reduce <laughs> let's reduce this pandemic down to four quick fire yes or no questions. We you know what you know we've learned? You can't do quick fire around COVID. It actually needs much more information than it needs that. ten to fourteen days at least all for right, a quick fire fine. around on COVID. Do you think we need one? We might do. We what we need to see is what the action. This is why did we have lockdowns before? Because we were trying to stop the NHS from falling over. We were yeah. trying to yeah. save as many lives as possible. Of course, there is that whole other argument about what about all the people that died of all the other things because they weren't going to A and E. That's a whole other part of that conversation. But right now, Omicron is doubling every two to three days, so they're expecting there to be about a million cases by New Year's, Fuck. which is an <laughs> awful lot of people uh, to be ill with it. However, it's looking like it's less severe in terms of how you know it's it, it, presentation it's people are coming away with severe colds as opposed to hospitalization certainly in africa they're seeing that people are needing less oxygen when they are hospitalized however just in the last 24 hours of recording this they've announced the first death from omicron yeah. so it, and it, and i and i said this uh and it's on Sky. But if if you think about it, even if the death rate is, as an example, I'm not using this as an actual number, if the death rate was 0.1% out of 1,000 people, that's one person. And it doesn't sound like a lot. And you go, Fuck do I them. know 1,000 people? <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, who's that one person I don't mind losing? You think about it. But if you do, if you roll that up to 60 million, which is yeah. our population, 60,000. That's 60,000 people. That's people, 60, yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So you've got to think, you've got to remember that Omicron will kill some people. So if we, that's, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about, do we let this run rampant because it's just a cold? and most people will be fine knowing that there will be people who yeah. will die from this okay. and can you have that on your conscience so the lockdown is about trying to save as many people as possible also by trying to stop the pe we only have so many doctors and nurses and we've lost a whole lot of them yeah. already in this pandemic yeah. so how much are we going how much more strain and stress are we, and they, yeah. are we going to put on them while other people are going off to you know greece and trying to 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 swim in the sea oh the sea is closed but that's a random reference but anyway the yeah. sea is closed yeah. well it wasn't for you apparently. oh wait hang on i, I understand that reference. yeah go oh. what reference is that uh, he knows. Was it Matt Andrew Hancock? Mm, no, Close. he was too busy. Dif dif Dominic uh, Rob. Dominic Rob. Yes. Yeah. Dominic Rob. <laughs> Sick one. Sick. While um, um, the Taliban took over Afghanistan, he was like, I'm sorry I couldn't answer the phone. The sea was closed. Or something weird. We just go, if the sea was closed, why uh, weren't you answering the I phone? Wasn't he, acu he was accused of like holidaying and like, living at large on the beach. And he was like, I couldn't have been at the beach because the sea was closed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. I saw Matt Hancock yesterday, uh, Sunday, watching his kid play football and he was just well watching his kid play football he was just on the phone the whole time and you know and you're like oh you're such a cartoon character um, what park was that well it seems rude to say because his child was there his but did you there. did you give it a whole yeah, like enough, every time that. his child kicked the ball your shit ah. no but at one point he got off the phone and went in goals and just kept kicking the ball up instead of to the boys how did you know that it was his son uh, because I 
uh, he was the only person either that or uh, have wrong either that or saw Matt Hancock, uh, Matt Hancock watching Hancock. eight children he does not know and one of them looks That's exactly like him. No, like him. It, no. But I was in a park near where photos were taken of his ex-wife's house, so presumably okay. he was there. Presumably he wasn't just watching eight random kids. No, but like which one of the eight? How do you did you know which? I don't one know of the which eight one were? was his kid. Oh but right, okay, okay. But basically, I saw him. Thought I would like to say something to him. I'm not going to do that because I presume his child is right there. Yeah, I always regret though. Before Boris Johnson was prime minister. I saw him riding around um, Westminster on a Brompton bike and I wish I'd called him a wanker. Like, I really profoundly wish I'd done it. I don't know that would have changed anything. I don't think it would have, but it would have made me feel bad. <laughs> Imagine that if that was his Scrooge moment. <laughs> oh my God, I should change my ways. <laughs> I was in New York once and I saw Tina Fey come out of a building and then I went, oh, I'm a professional. She's a professional. I won't bother her. You know they don't want to be and bothered. And you regret. Don't be bothered. And then the moment she got in the cab, I went, what are you doing? Why? Get the Why? cab, the cab. I know, but you know, then immediate, then immediate, my first response was, oh, I, I wouldn't want to be hounded so I won't hound her. That was what my first fool. response. That's a lovely like, response. It is. But I know, but. It's a flattering comparison for Matt Hancock <laughs> to be like, that's just like when I met Tina Fey. <laughs> uh, I, I was trying to think, do I have any, any no, I hear you. comparisons? Got any more um, questions? I've got a questions. question. Yeah, Here's go on. A question. So uh, I think this question could be filled with ignorance. So I apologize for that. Um, Maria has opened herself up to that because she said that we can ask stupid questions. That's really yes. nice. No, no. You. So no question is too stupid. Well, okay. Is it? Is it look, if Omicron like sweeps the nation as we expect it to? Will that sort of like build up an immunity which might help? the virus sort of fizzle out essentially or will it just um like mutate again and we'll just keep having to sort of deal with and i, I know that's like prophesying and you can't really good do that. question sorry right, that's oh. a really good question she's not said that before it's a good question. don't clap yourself <laughs> <laughs> don't clap yourself my clap I'll is egalitarian I'll do, it. I'll do it thank you so much that was a good question it was very good question ridiculous so, let's start with the first bit um if omicron sweeps through the nation will we see some kind of herd immunity mm -hmm. As much as I hate to say this, and, and everybody that, you know how the government always wanted herd immunity from yeah. the beginning? They're like, oh, let's just do herd immunity and never mind who dies, which was awful and cruel. Because we kept opening up and Europe kept staying closed, we actually ended up with a higher level of Delta immunity by the time we got to sort of October, November mm -hmm. than the rest of Europe. So in a way, they were, they, even though, even though we never wanted it, because we ended up there with how often we were open in the summer, when they started having surges again in Europe and we're starting to do lockdowns in the Netherlands and Germany, we were okay. We were yeah, like, actually, also, we're all right. That was in tandem with the fact that Austria and places didn't have as high a vaccine. Yes, so and that was know. also the fact that we had quite a successful vaccine program. So it's coupled with that. So the two things you have together. To, when you have the highest rate of deaths, right? You have to be pretty on it with the vaccines when everyone's dying. Yes, which again, annoyingly, is partly to do with Brexit as well because we were separate from because we were completely separate we from the hoard. EU we, well we could hoard but we could just make our own decisions and just go and we're going to buy a bunch of stuff and, and roll it out without having to kind of check with Europe whereas and we Europe are... had to decide first of all oh do we do this all together or do we separately who wants to do what who wants what order and that took a lot of time for them to get themselves sorted so from that point of view we were in a fairly good situation with Delta mm -hmm. up to the beginning of November when other people weren't now Omicron's come out uh, and it is sweeping across the world, pretty much. I mean, it's it's in the states now. It's twenty in twenty five states in the states, and you know, it's in Europe, it's in Africa, as we know. And and the thing is, is that it, it it's we're going to follow a similar trajectory with other variants, and that we're going to have to keep an eye on it. We're going to have to keep an eye on deaths. We're going to have to keep an eye on 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 d damage control. This comes back to the lockdown. Are we gonna have to lock down because that's the only way to seriously stop mm -hmm. the spread of this? I have two questions when you're ready. Okay. In terms of a new variant coming out, the reason, so just so we coming got, out, it sounds like well, a sort of like new now. Now that's what I call music. Coming out, soon <laughs> to a lake <laughs> to an unvaccinated area near you. Yeah. Uh, so so we've got Omicron spreading right now, but where do variants come from? Variants, and this is where hopefully we learn our lesson with Omicron and not mm. the next one or the next one is we were quite selfish and we vaccinated ourselves not once, not twice, but now three times in this country we have handed out good quality vaccines to ourselves yeah. and we haven't been helping the third world to vaccinate themselves and we've been pushing and pushing and pushing this and the reason that we saw these variants come out is because we have yes we've got pockets of unvaccinated we're seeing what's happening in Austria where they're going right the unvaccinated need to lock in because that's where Delta was spreading amongst but in Africa we've got entire 
like countries so that my, need to be vaccinated. This is my first question because Gordon Brown's obviously been saying this for ages. And by the way, I realized a minute ago, I was like, oh, this isn't funny. And then I was like, eh, if you have this anxiety and I have this anxiety and you're here, I feel like we're just going to take the opportunity and not lol for two minutes. But I, I can be funny. Oh, and yeah, I just say, I, I, and I, just, I can be funny. Jeffrey I can be funny. on Apollo. But I want to ask questions about your comedy as well. Okay. And we will. Yeah. Okay. But, I, but I really think like... Very funny. That starts with a V. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what um, else starts? Vaginas. Mm. I've already got the three V. Oh, oh, perfect. Okay. The, <laughs> already? Already. The man oh doesn't God. need help. Yeah, <laughs> good. He's so, hi, Andrew, by the way. We Andrew, haven't yeah. met him. Hello. Um, but here's the thing. I love him. Oh, we all love Andrew. He's a sweet boy. Um, Great at levels. But the, I guess the thing is like, shit at dating. Gordon Br- Brown has been saying. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Savage. Someone's been listening. Savage. I know, I know. So Gordon Brown's been saying for ages, hey, you can vaccinate all you want in developed countries if you don't provide international capacity for vaccination then what you're going to just see is a continued spread because the world is global in its movement or the world will stop being global in its movement or, we're going to end or, up with right which is like yes fundamentally not workable long term right yeah and we're st- and we're really struggling to think globally um at a time you know this is the thing we were just getting to a point where we're going we're so global let's yeah. solve the global problem let's solve climate change which is global we mm-hmm. were going global and then suddenly the pandemic happened and that's where we learned hard lessons about borders even in europe which has a Schengen, you know they had to even within europe shut borders which was not the idea of the Schengen agreement at all um and so yes but the truth is is that you you know is that if you have pockets as we know of the unvaccinated what we saw here on a small scale is that the virus continued to spread amongst the unvaccinated austria perfect example of that and if you look at it globally if you have entire countries or continents that are that don't have high enough vaccination rates, yes, you're not going to stop the spread of this. And the way that variants come out and the way that these mutations, you've heard that Omicron has like 32 mutations in it, which is a lot of mutations away from where we were. We were sort of as seeing many one as or two counties or in three. Ireland. Oh, really? There you are. Oh, she, she's got some Irish content there you in. Go. <laughs> 30, Wouldn't it can be you trusty hugs with 32 of them? Is that a thing I you do I don't think do anybody wants that on a podcast. But no, yeah, but I is that, that a thing that you yeah, yeah, used yeah, to do? Yeah. Sort of like Americans have to name all 50 states yeah, and yeah, capitals. Yeah. There you go. It's a very good education system in Ireland. It is a good education system. really good education system. Thank you so much for saying so. No, I'm jealous. No, it's true. Except for when it comes to foreign languages where we could do better. But you do speak English very well. (laughs) It's our first language. But I thought I... I, But what happened to... I I'm think. able to speak Irish, but yeah. that's a... Is that not the first language? That's not our, is that, so that's it is in certain, p- certain pockets, but very small pockets of Ireland. Are you fluent in Irish? No, but I'm not going to speak Irish. Oh, that's hot. Speak it if you oh, want me to. But that was beautiful. But I'm not actually able to... It's not my first language, and I'm not fluent. I used to be close to when I was in school, but... Um, so all so of you, schooling is in English? Yeah, unless you go to an, uh, like a school that's Osgoelga. But also, they, like, uh, there's this phrase in Irish that's tear gun chong a tear gun anim. So a country without a language is a country without a soul. And Ireland is definitely in that situation where it's, oh. like, trying not to lose its language. This is not what we were talking about. Mm. Circle back. So I think that's beautiful, though. I agree. How do you say the name of what is your head of government? Taoiseach. Taoiseach. See, and I hear it and I go, I will remember that. And then I see it written down and I go, I cannot remember how it's said. <laughs> no, but you've heard some tea and you are shook. Taoiseach. T-shock. I love now that. This it. is really good. Everyone's been yeah. so smart T-shock. today. T-shock. Okay. You've heard some tea and you oh. are shook. T-shock. Okay. Yeah. That's and it's our, just so that's nice. With that, little, with that little eye roll yeah. as well. T-shock. T-shock. You've just made your Prime Minister camp. I love right? that. Right? Well, well, Prime Minister, no. The last one was gay. The last Not one was camp, gay. though. Not, Act, no, and actually very conservative, you, real shame. Oh. A conservative gay. In a Catholic country. You've Can never you believe? Heard of a I'm just, I'm just <laughs> blowing my mind. Blowing my mind. Can you okay. believe? Okay. Um, but so, yes, we mm. need to get global vaccines. And then my mm. other question was, because I think, uh, just to check in, so like what was called the Indian variant and then became Delta. Mm. Good memory. We're not supposed to remember those things. I know. But mm. Omicron, mm. also being discussed as South African, are is it true that those, like, it was just, it was just first named and... A passion was discovered in South Africa, or did it originate there? 
Well, no one knows. That's exactly. the okay, thing. That's you I don't thought. know. That's you don't know where it started. Okay. And in fact, there was another country I that like I heard it from that. first. Yeah. So before, so South Africa has a very good scientific system, and they're very yeah. good at sequencing. And they have uh, compared to their neighbors. So if anyone's going to find it and identify it and catch it first, it's going to be South Africa because of their scientific infrastructure. It does feel like they got blamed for noticing first. Uh, Yes, to a certain extent, but actually, it was one of the neighboring countries that they first noticed. A, you know, the, they, they they suddenly had this increase in transmission rates that they went, "That's funny." But then, but then it first got sequenced and identified mm -hmm. in South Africa. But, but it, that doesn't mean that's where it came from. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. all loaded, isn't it? It's like uh, you know the the chi the Chinese. Oh yeah, hundred percent. All of this kind of thing, and it's 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 like completely racist in tone. And I think we're just doing like on a macro level. But, but even so, even if it did start there, if you go, oh, okay, let's, you know, say it started in country X. Well, then everybody should be racing to vaccinate country X. Yeah. Not going, yeah. oh, it's your <laughs> but it, fault. But it's, it's, like, going, it's, on, it's on a macro no, it's level, a I feel like what happens on like a sort of, and I, I don't think we're particularly bad at it in like our social circle, but I think it's what's happening on a micro level where like if 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 someone gets it, they're going like, who did I catch it off? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And it's like... Th there's a global pandemic. You, and it, yeah, yeah, and it's one of those things of like with Omicron, it's like likely that we're all going to get it. So it's just like you, you it's no one's well, fault. But this, it just, like, just but this whole thing, I mean, that's a casual phrase. Likely we're all going to get it. But that's what I'm saying. We don't necessarily know. Who, you know, this is what the boosters are. The boosters will provide you with antibodies, which were designed against the al um, the original variant. And we've gone through Alpha and Delta here, and it, and they still prove to sh give us some immunity and give us some head start. And now we're looking, and it's having some effect mm. against Omicron. We still need to see. I mean, there's so many things about the immune system. Everybody has their own unique in immune system. And if there's one thing that we've really learned from from this pandemic is is the, how widely varied immune systems are. So in my family, five of us had alpha at the same time and we each presented slightly differently with slightly different systems symptoms slightly different symptoms Are slightly different his presentations <laughs> well i'm not gonna say that <laughs> on air am i what a way to find out am um, i i would love to tell you that we're going to change the topic but in fact what we're going to do is solve a listener problem and Ooh, i think yay. it might actually be on theme is that okay oh, yeah of course um, uh, I, I'm gonna ask. vicarious worrying that's right vicarious, vicarious. you're welcome oh, that's lovely. I'm I'm She's giving that one a five. varied vocabulary. vocabulary. <laughs> it was a long Two V's. Two V's. Hello, don't skip. It becomes apparent, it has become apparent on this episode that people like Chloe Petz, who do listen to every episode, skip when we're doing admin. Fucking rude. So, in case you didn't know, you get an extra episode a week. If you're a patron, 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 so sign up. And also when they're doing an advert, they do actually say valuable things, but I didn't realise that. Yeah. So yeah, you get an extra episode. It's worth a three quid a month. Just check it out. Five pounds a month for the extra episode. Five pounds a month. It is also worth five pounds a month. Okay. Andrew will edit this or maybe he won't, but I hope you haven't skipped. Please join us for the extras. Patreon.com forward slash trusty hearts. Yeah. So, so we want to keep on theme or would like a change of pace? Keep on theme. What do you guys want? Do you want a, th a th same theme or a change of pace? A bit of both. Can we do two? A bit of both? Let's not say that I'm here to answer people's worries and then ignore their worries and go, oh, let's change the theme. I'm so bored. Yeah. Do you want to do no, two? Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, but if we don't have time, change the theme. Okay. <laughs> so we'll, change, we'll change the theme first and then we'll come back to yeah. the theme. Yeah, perfect. As, as, long perfect. As, we have, as long as I get tit on head at the end, I'm happy with whatever. Oh, God, you'd barely notice mine. It would be like a whisper. <laughs> Mine is strapped down. I'd have to get Listen, them out. I'm just. I'm Are just, they? I've, yeah. yeah. I like your strap down. Yeah, they, this is what, how I am. Yeah, I yeah. just don't have any. I don't need to strap. Yeah, we don't have any. They're not massive, no. but what what is there gets. If I were, I, I'm a little bit warm, I'll admit, but I didn't wear a bra, but I can't take this off because. Well, you bloody well can can't. if you want. Nah, mm, no, I just, I really couldn't. That's okay. There's no yeah. need. There's really no need. Okay, off you go. Okay. <laughs> um, Yes, so this is uh, from W. Hi, W. Hi, hey, W. You know what I wish I had done from the start? A V? Episode one. No, a V. Ah, oh, that would have been good. <laughs> this is two Vs together. Yeah. yeah. We don't have time. Let's solve anyway, this yeah, problem. Sorry, sorry. Right. <laughs> I have a relationship issue I've been trying to work through for a while and hoping you can help. When I got together with my boyfriend four years ago, he was very self-assured and it gave me such happiness meeting someone who is completely comfortable in their own skin. 
Over the past year, however, I've noticed him become less emotionally aware, e.g. thinking about work instead of making conversation and also in social situations, like being, being oblivious if a comment is awkward, etc. Uh, the issue is very much brimming, but it's coming to the light uh, majorly this week as I asked him if he's excited about moving into a beautiful apartment together, uh, brackets, we haven't signed for it yet, and he said he doesn't feel excitement about it. He said he's worried that he can't be like he used to be uh, and doesn't feel emotions like he used to or like other people do. Uh, it's clearly something he's noticed about himself and doesn't know how to get better. We can't afford therapy. I'm not sure how to help him. Mm. What should I do? Is it worth moving in with someone who doesn't feel excitement about it? And generally, long-term relationships do scare me because people change so much, especially in their 20s. That's a lot. That's a lot. That is a lot. W, that's a lot. Can I um, start by saying, first of all, it's okay to be questioning. I think long-term relationships are an ongoing question and it's good that you're being active in choosing whether or not you want to be with the person rather than just letting it happen to you. However, I think there's loads there. Um, and I want to flag from the outset, none of us are professional psychologists. I came on and I said that and both of you were like, fuck it, we're going to give them marriage <laughs> advice. Get them all, baby. <laughs> Strap in. <laughs> we're going to make things worse rather than better. I think, you, I think I'll just flag that and also flag that that is ultimately our our, our stance nonetheless um, but dump I, him no 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 sign it on in your own no, can I just the guy's got depression and you can't live with that no <laughs> <laughs> all right Chloe that's, the thing is I actually think that that's what I think you that really feel it's a bit harsh to be like I met him and he was this way at his best and now he's having like he's, his emotions are dull and he's having a bad time is it ever going to be okay again when like I think it's pretty apparent he's going through a tough period. And also, get on, get him on the NHS waiting list. I know it takes ages, but at least like you don't have to be able to afford therapy. There are also like pay what you want therapy programs. That yeah, are I, I don't know if you're queer and and or in London, but there's a service called ELOP, which is for LGBTQ plus people, and it's subsidised. Yeah. Oh, there, there must be loads, but I think ELOP is. Um, really great no i was gonna say i think he sounds like he has depression people yeah. don't realize that depression people who don't have any experience with depression think that it's being sad and being in bed all day and crying and it isn't it is actually i think the first early stages are just a numbness yeah. um and i have really bad seasonal affective disorder yeah. and it, it is it's a numbness it's an inability to just relate to others because you can barely relate to yourself yeah and so i think actually the first step is to just maybe get him to the gp and see if the gp can help yeah. with you know up his vitamin d levels as well because that's just good generally and we're all mm -hmm. low if you're in the uk w but st I, w I would say yeah i would say it sounds like because if if he was always like that then i would say maybe consider you know if, if you found that he always wasn't relating or saying embarrassing things that that the wasn't in the zeitgeist i'd say maybe consider whether he might have autism because that's the other thing that runs in my family up and down it uh but because you're saying he changed from one to the other and given that we've just been through two years of pandemic consider him just going in the short term to the gp yeah also it feels a little bit like the framing of the question of like are you excited to move in together felt a bit like a test and mm. ultimate ultimately like it, what it sounded like you were either asking him was like, because if you don't want to, we don't have to, which maybe means you don't want to. Or if you were saying, can you be better for when we move in together? Because I think that's an unfor unfair burden or, to put on someone. Or even, but even me, more just for like, me. Mm -hmm. No, but I think it was it was probably more framed as like, a, I'm feeling really worried about this and what I want is reassurance yeah. that you do want this. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's like... Before, also that. Before yeah. a big but, commitment. But that's where you change the question not to not to try and make them say the thing that you want if you have a worry say that the thing that you want as a statement rather than as a as a que like yeah. a sort of question which like circumnavigates what you actually want yes <clears throat> i want your tit on my head <laughs> <sighs> for, for the benefit of the listener i'll just really audio hard. describe this Oh, oh my god, they're like through the fog. <laughs> step for oh the god. trusty <laughs> hog. Oh, yeah, you're gonna so give nice. them a problem <laughs> and they will <laughs> solve it. Or maybe <laughs> they <laughs> won't. Like, like and that's your problem. <laughs> and then yours was just a little bit full, like duvet. You're like feather pillow and you're like feather duvet. It was just so, I'm just so pleased we could help you out with that. Oh, that was oh, it was just a moment. That was nice. We shared that together. That I'm never really gonna nice, So I guess that's an example of what we're saying. Over it. Yeah, so an example mm. of what we're saying is that you just need to say, I want reassurance that what you really want is to move in with me. I want a tit on my head. Yeah. I, I want, want a tit on my head. Well, hang on. Point, like, 
have have you addressed this directly with him? Because mm -hmm. it I, sounds like you're sidestepping it. I worry though that if you just focus on the moving in together, and maybe I'm being, I worry that if you just focus on that, the whole thing might fall apart because yeah. it isn't about that. It's about is he okay? Mm. Exactly. Mm. So I get that you're you're coming up to sign because the thing is is that. You've also got your happiness to think about. And I get that there's this whole worry about commitment and moving in together and the rest of it. But if that flat would make you happy, because it sounds gorgeous, and, and that would make you happy, you being happy is also important. Mm. And if he's if he's sick, then he's he's not not happy about moving in together. He's ill yeah. and can't be happy about moving in together. But yeah. once he's better, then he could be happy about yeah. being, being moving in together. To so it doesn't sound like he doesn't want it. It sounds like he can't want it. The other thing, like the other thing to say is one flat can't fix all problems and also that there are multiple nice flats. So if you want to put it on hold till he is feeling better, that's also fine. And also, I think that it's important to remember that relationships do go in phases as well. And like, it isn't going to be the same as it was when it was first at the beginning. But like, that's where you make the decision that you... Are you telling... What? Really? Yeah, it can't it be changes? all the time. It changes? It changes. Yeah. Oh, don't tell me that. I'm like 20 years in. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, second problem. Real fast, Andrew. Yes. Uh, okay. Hope that helps, W. Good so luck. We'll, uh, shoot back to uh, virology and vaccines. <gasps> Uh, oh, that's the, those are two Vs. Virology, yeah. vaccines, vulvas. No, we haven't spoken about. We're not. We, we no, we've we haven't even we've not vagina. mentioned vaginas at all. No. I've 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 already got the Vs as well. Just okay, to, great. To great. Yeah. Okay, um, don't it's like he doesn't need us. Fine. Okay. Okay. But one of them has to be vaguely funny, like styes. Look, in... Andrew is vexed. We're moving on. Vexed. vexed. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Come on, tell us the last one. <laughs> oh, love it. Look at that education. <laughs> Uh, uh, just a bit of advice uh, uh, I need. I have a friend who I've known for over 25 years. She's not vaccinated and refuses to be. I don't agree, but I've made my peace with it. But now she has faked a vaccination card and uses it to get into venues and clubs. <gasps> cause, and uh, so she doesn't have to take a guess because she can't be asked any ideas about what I should do. Whoa. Drama. Where's Helen? I say we get Helen round her house now. What the literal No, I did hell? not. I did not literally say go and infect her, but I did. But take, oh, cut right. that out. Thought, cut I, that out. I, I, I just thought Helen was going to be like the enforcer, I think. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. enforcer. I thought she was going to like use her tip powers for good to like... <laughs> To like knock someone out. Hold it. on, hold on. Horrend oh my god. <clears throat> Here's my feeling. I don't mind you drinking till you're drunk. I do mind you getting behind a wheel. Mm. You don't get to endanger other people willfully, knowingly, and not have consequence. If do whatever you feel is morally correct for yourself, but if you want to report that. That's absolutely fine. I also don't think it's necessarily that you need to do the reporting because that's quite like an emotional thing. Like, mm -hmm. imagine if they're feeling like, but can I do that without being like, a bad person? Just a dead the friendship. System for that. Also that. Also is dead there, the yeah, there must be a reporting. Is system. there a way? Yeah. I mean, I mean, is <clears throat> that what we've come to? We've got a, at the moment a society where you can choose or not choose to be yeah. vaccinated, but society is going in a direction. And this is one of the reasons, you know, how, you know, Bore, the, the current government doesn't want to have a vaccine mandate and they don't want to have vaccine passports as as a law requirement. And they've left it up to businesses because, A, they don't want to, you know, be unpopular with half of their 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 voters. But B, because they want to leave it up to business to go, I am happy to do business with you or I'm not happy to do business with you. And that's yeah. where they've left it. And so if we're in a situation where you make that choice, I choose not to be vaccinated then you have to stand up for that choice. but mm -hmm. No, but you f you forged a government document. But that, that's Ria's point, right? It's a, oh, right, it's a yeah. cop Either you make that decision and you live with it, you, oh, deal, right, you okay, deal with businesses yeah, yeah. who won't do business with you. I get it, yeah. Or that's just an absolute chicken shit to be like, oh, I don't want to get vaccine, but I still want to go. I still want every privilege of someone who is. Yeah. Like, it's like, no, own it and, and back it and let people honestly engage with you on those terms or don't. Yeah, I think you're, you're driving a car is a very apt... Um, metaphor for it because it, it's tricky i completely understand about body autonomy and who are we to tell someone else you have to put that in your arm i think fine. that that's a very big discussion to have who am i to say no you will do this to your that's own fine. body because that is exactly what we're fighting all the time as women especially when it comes to reproductive mm -hmm. you know issues and and health and in the states they seem to be going backwards in a lot of ways so i completely appreciate body autonomy in that regard but 
also, we live in a society, and if you want to continue to live in a society, you're going to have to accept that you are not an island and that what you do does have certain consequences. Women can drive, just not drunk. Fine. But, but like the... Com- Fine, the, women can drive, okay? The, you the happy co- now? <laughs> the comparison oh. to abortion like, only, work, like, only goes so far because like one thing is the state telling you that you have to look after this child that you don't want for the rest of your life, and one is you have to do this thing to like, help people for the rest of that like, like like it only goes so far and i don't know what my point is but like no i think you know what, it is what? a valid point because it's just not a black and white issue is it you're you, yes on the one hand it's what can a woman do for herself for her life that affects her primarily yeah. versus we're asking you to do something for the be- benefit of others because you're right that under a certain age limit and with you know if you are under the age of 40 have no underlying health conditions then all of the evidence so far says that COVID probably won't be that big a risk to you. Mm -hmm. And so you could catch it and recover from it and probably be okay. Mm. So why should you go with this drug from this company that we don't know what's in it, blah, blah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I appreciate that there's a lot of people out there with that mindset Mm -hmm. of going, look, on the balance of risks to myself, I'd rather risk getting COVID than putting this particular manufactured product it's in my funny, body. You just and can't lie about it. When, when yeah, lying. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, so it's separate issues where like one, one when you're not taking it, it's like, okay, I think you're a bit of a doofus myself, but I understand why you've come to that decision. Now it's got to the point where it's like genuinely amoral. And I think this person needs to choose whether they are willing to sort of be friends with someone who would do something like that. And I know that you've spoken a lot in previous podcast episodes about how difficult it is to have difficult conversations and break off friendships. But listen to the back catalogue, baby, and yeah. get all your advice from there about, I think possibly the thing that you need to do is choose to end this friendship. And if you... if you, That's a heavy weight to carry around. If you, if you just want to pull the friendship, that's absolutely completely fine. But if you, if you want to have that conversation, then have that conversation. It's two halves, isn't it? The first half of not being vaccinated is that's the friendship moral question. Am I going to still be friends or even put my own health at risk? Because we do know that if you are unvaccinated, you are more likely to catch it and therefore more likely to spread it yeah. uh, as well because I have an aunt but, getting vaccinated I respect that but I also don't go, I'm not going to go visit her yeah. and the second half well and the second half of that is fraud I mean it's it's a yeah. crime isn't yeah, it yeah, she yeah. is she's fraudulently yeah. presenting herself as one way over, over listen us. here's my thing you don't have to get your kid vaccinated <clears throat> though I think you should you don't have to but if you know your kid has chicken pox sends them send them to kindergarten and don't tell the you know the other parents there you're, you're willfully endangering the other children yeah it doesn't it's the exact, mm. exact same here I just don't... just say to your friend like i ain't gonna see you until the pandemic's over the end yeah or you're willfully endangering other people in a way that i didn't think was was consistent with your personality the person the caring person i i became friends with and so while i understand you're you're right not to vaccinate yourself your willful bending of the rules and endangerment of other people makes you a person that I don't recognize. Or just say Peace Bowers out. on our way around. Get yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's very articulate, but I did, did much prefer you're a skank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yo, 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 you're a skank, bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just play that little, you're a skank. <laughs> I don't know where my We yo, can yo, cut yo, that yo. down and make that available for you as a, a yeah. ringtone. Oh, that would be so cool. Trust me, ringtone. Yo, yo, yo. I can only apologize. You're a skank. You're a skank. <laughs> You're a skank. skank. You're a skank. Um, yeah, that's my thinking. I just think I just think <clears> you have to give other people. Listen, I just think you have to make sure that the other people in the in this. It, here's the thing: is people who don't want to get vaccinated really reiterate consistently their right to bodily autonomy, their right to choice, and their right to full information. You don't then get to deny other people's right to choice, full information and bodily autonomy by showing up at places and pretending you have a vaccine in spaces that they have been told are for place for people who have been vaccinated. I'm ready to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, that, 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 that was beautiful. That, that is the crux That was beautiful. That's, that's one exactly of the best it. things I've ever heard. <laughs> Sorry, but that that's what I was trying to figure out what Can was we? bothering me so much. And that's what it is. It's yeah. that they demand one thing for themselves in that scenario that person does and then denies it of other people. That's Skank. Cool. I would say j- just I mean, just as a suggestion, Andrew, that you cut out everything we said before that and just put that. <laughs> <in the answer. laughs> 
<laughs> Ignore everything else. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. Really, Lena, you've been an amazing guest. Oh, I feel you. like I've learned so much and I still have questions, but where can we, for several things, one, Ooh, where, where, can we quick find, where can we find you um, if we want to watch your comedy? B- Ma- oh gosh, BBC at the moment, I guess. I guess she's like yeah. on live with the Apollo. Don't worry about it. I guess yeah, she's just out. like on live with the Apollo. That's out. And that uh, that will probably hit YouTube if you're not in the UK. That'll hit YouTube at some point because they always do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there. Otherwise, like on Instagram, I've got all, you know, like everyone else. I got loads of little Rialina. reels. It's re- at Rialina underscore. But just search for my name and you'll see me. Like, I mean. And you'll- Twitter? And Twitter. TikTok? And TikTok. Facebook? And Facebook. There she'll be. Do you have a website? Realina.com. Amazing. Are you going doing any tour, tour shows or shows they can see soon? Uh, well, just all my gig lists are on my website and things like um, that. The other thing I'm going to ask. Aren't you touring? Oh, yes, I am. Thank you so much for asking, really. <laughs> I'm touring. Yeah. Me too. Wow, it's so good. Oh, my God. Are you touring? Yes, we yeah, both are. Baby. Thank you so much for asking. I'm touring. Tell me everything. I'm doing a tour called Transients, and it's a Ooh, stunning good, good poster, words. a mm. very nice list of venues. Their first tour, and it's going to be sick. It's going to be so oh. good. Okay, I want to see and all that. And I guess I was hoping Chloe Pets would reciprocate, but they haven't. So I'm also going on tour. Oh, yeah. And it's, oh, it's going to be it's gonna transform the face That's... of British comedy, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous photo, by the way, so with much. which to transform the face Thank of comedy. I British really and that. Irish. Thank you. It's cold. This isn't for you. And in theory, I'll be on tour in the new but year. But I, I can come, though. Oh, please. And okay. I will say this, right. that as comics. Who it is for me. Oh, wait, oh. Despite the title, I would really like people to attend. The, okay, the all right. The full title is actually "This Isn't for You." Brackets, except really, no. Yeah. <laughs> brackets, Aww. please come. Um, <laughs> okay. But I would say that uh, if you are want to support an artist, booking tickets to a show right now would mean the world because people have stopped booking because they're tentative, and I totally get that. But mm. whenever you do buy tickets, if the show is to be rescheduled, you'll get tickets for that new date, or you can get a refund. But it just means. So much to artists to think people still want to go and we can plan accordingly and not cancel our shows, which would mean the world. Really, now, last question. Okay. I'm a listener. I'm a hog. I'm a fan. I like comedy, but I also like to learn. I don't want to bother Rialina. She's already getting enough tweets. That's a lot of tweets for one person. She doesn't have that many 15-minute sections in her day. Where could I go to find out more that would be clear, understandable? Maybe by The St. James's Bible. About <laughs> 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 not about herpes, it's, about it's all there in Revelation. It's the really? end days. Is that that's your preferred translation? Is St. James? Yeah, a we're, little we're, bit modern, we're really? St. James's country. Are you? Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I would have gone say. Gideon, but just you know, I prefer nah. a little more uh, Gideon's more Gideon's more for, I'm just Gideon's for when you're on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and if you get to that last chapter, it's so much more exciting. <laughs> get get into when name. you're going rotty. <laughs> Where? Oh my god! <laughs> Where can I find out more about COVID that you think is a trusted source? Okay, I think that if you uh, are not scientifically minded and you're like. How do I know what to do or what to do? I would say that Check. the explainers <laughs> on BBC and Sky are really, really explainers. good explainers. So not like, this is a news article, headline, this just happened. But they do explainers which go through and just say, look, here's a catch-up of where we are. And they go backwards and they go through everything. And it's really clear and easy to read. So those I, are really good. That's lovely. Okay, great. Because I have they have them on every country in the world as well, which I really like. Oh, wow. Um, I'd never read the COVID ones, and that's a good idea. Yes. Rialina, everybody. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, thank you.